what's up YouTube? Joe here from Grindhouse Grotto. And um, today Blumhouse Productions has released the official poster for 2018's Halloween. Um, so I figured what better way than to cover the franchise as a whole and give my thoughts on the new Halloween sequel. So <clears throat> looking at this new poster, um, I, I dig it. I really like the fact that they try to replicate, replicate as closely to the original uh, 1978's mask that was used in the original film. Um, I like that they made it weathered looking. Um, they tried to replicate what it would look like if 40 years later, what would the mask look like? So I thought that was really good that they tried to replicate that as closely as possible. Um, yeah, I mean, it almost kind of looks like they're going after what would, what would Michael Myers look 40 years later, okay? So I'm assuming, now this is just kind of my, my thoughts on it, I'm assuming that at some point in this movie we're going to see Michael Myers without his mask on, okay? That's going to be the big reveal at the end of the movie. Similar to um, the original Halloween where at the end of the movie we finally, you know, the, the, the mask gets torn off of uh, Michael Myers and we get to see what he looks like for a brief second. I don't think it's going to be a full-on, you know, the end of the movie, we're going to see him without his mask on for a significant amount of time, but I, I feel like, you know, we are going to see that. Uh, and I think that's going to be towards the end of the film. I think it's going to be part of the the, the, the reveal at the end. Um, and that's kind of kind of been, I think, in a lot of people's minds, you know, like, what would, what would Michael Myers do later on in his life if he somehow survived and um, he's just kind of biding his time to, to come back to Haddonfield and wreak, wreak havoc? What would, what would Michael Myers look like? And I think we're going we're gonna to get that kind of explained in this movie. Um, so yeah, I, I, dig the, I dig the poster. I think it's pretty cool. I really like the way the, the mask looks. I mean, we're not really seeing the full mask. We're just kind of seeing a close-up of it. But um, it definitely you can definitely tell that there's a lot of um, uh, wear and tear on the mask. It's aged quite a bit. You know, the latex is definitely worn down in it. I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's simple yet effective. Um, for obvious reasons, they obvi you know they're not going to be able to get the original mass from from uh, Halloween and probably Halloween too. Um, but you know, I definitely like the fact that they've they've they try to uh, recreate the original mask. That's definitely cool. Now, over the years, we've seen different iterations of this mask. We've seen in part one um, the original mask. It was basically a spinoff of you know they took on um, William Shatner's Star Trek mask and they basically. They, they, they did a white out of the skin and, um, you know, they, they, they enlarged in the, um, the openings of the mask and the eyes to give it like a kind of like a pale, motionless uh, expression to it. And that's the mask that we've all kind of grown to know and love. And then in part two, it was basically the same mask, but you had um, Dick Warlock was, was wearing the mask. So he had, a, he had a kind of like a wider face. So it made it seem like the mask was a little bit bigger. A little bit wider, but it's essentially the same mask. And then in you know in um, Halloween Returns, um, the Return of Michael Myers, Halloween Four, is just a really bizarre looking mask. Um, I, I love I love all the masks, but it's kind of like in Part Four. Why did they Why did they feel the need to just basically create a whole do, different look for Michael Myers? I never really understood that. But yeah, I mean, it's still I still enjoy all the films, and I, I enjoy the different versions of the mask. It just never really made sense to me why they didn't make a, a better effort to replicate, you know, part one and part two's mask. And then in part five, we get an even stranger mask. Um, yeah, it just looks like his his hair is all messy, you know, uh, just looks really different. And then in uh in 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 the Curse of Michael Myers, we get uh, in part six we get kind of a throwback to part one and part two's mask. It looks pretty similar, similar, but yet again, they, it's, it's got their own little, you know, spin on the Michael Myers mask. Um, now Halloween H2O's mask, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, now they had different masks. I think about Halloween H2O is they use different masks in the filming of that movie. So at one point it was like a really, uh, expressionless a really blank face okay so it looked kind of like part four is a little bit but just really blank 
you know, you didn't see the, like the little, you know, uh, curvatures of the face in her. They just kind of like a really blank, pale face. And then when they were doing some, you know, editing of the film later on, they decided, well, we kind of want to make it look a little bit more like uh, part one and part two's mask. So in the close-up scenes of the movie, they went back and redid some editing, and they 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 they, they got a different mask that looks similar to part one and part two, and they kind of on the close-up scenes they 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 edited it in a little bit. But overall, I mean, I think the looks are, look of Michael Myers throughout the films has been pretty consistent. Um, and then we got Halloween Resurrection, same thing. They kind of borrowed on the mask room from Halloween H2O because Resurrection was basically a sequel, a direct sequel to H2O. So the, the mask is pretty similar. And then we get to the Rob Zombie remake and then the sequel to the remake. And Rob Zombie's, in, uh, the way he envisioned the mask for his remakes was he wanted to be really torn and just dirty and grimy. And that kind of fits like his style of directing in my opinion. Um... His films are always really gritty and just dirty and nasty, so he wanted a really gritty and dirty look to his mask. Um, but yeah, I like all the masks for the movies, and I like all the films, so it really doesn't bother me too much that there's different variations of the mask. And that really just, I mean, in a nutshell, it's just based off of the director's preference, I guess, and where they wanted to go with the film. Um... But yeah, as far as the 2018's mask, I really like it. Uh, I like the fact that they brought it back to, you know, what it's supposed to look like 40 years from the original, okay? And I think they did a good job. I guess we'll see a little bit when it comes out October 18th, um, how it looks, you know, in all the different frames and everything. But from what this poster is displaying, I think it, they think they did a good job. All right. So my thoughts on the films and where I think the future of the franchise is going with this latest movie, the 2018 uh, direct sequel to the first one, 1978's Halloween. Um, yeah, these films hold a it, it deeps, uh, they hold a, a a place in my heart because similar to some of the other movies that I really like as a kid growing up, Halloween's one of those films that you know I followed all the movies. I've watched all the movies millions of times. I just love these films. And even though we've seen different directors, you know, we've, we've seen the different actors, you know, play different roles in the movies, um, I love all the films, okay? And when I first, first initially heard the news that they were going to be doing, that John Carpenter was going to be involved with this new movie, and they were going to make a direct sequel to the first movie, um, I had mixed feelings about it. I, like I said, I like all the films, so to me, it was a little disappointing that they weren't going to somehow make a sequel to the original ones. I always like when films in these horror franchises like, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, these slasher icons that we've all grown in love over the years. I like it when they try to keep the continuity between the films. But I can see the reason being that they needed to kind of move on with these other films and kind of start over from scratch. There was a kind of a mixed reaction to the Rob Zombie films. Um, you know, you had like, it was a kind of like a split camp. You had 50% of the fans liked the new direction that Rob Zombie took it with the remake. And then you had another half that was like, he destroyed the franchise. So from a film from a directing point of view, from a filmmaking point of view, I can kind of see where Bloomhouse Productions is going with this film and, and where they saw the need to kind of start over fresh. Okay? Everybody, hands down, loves the original movie. Okay? And to me, I like, I like all of them. But I mean, I like the sequel as well. I like Halloween too. Uh, so I was a little bit confused why they wouldn't go off of Halloween 2 because I think there's enough of a of a fan base, enough support for, for Halloween 2 that they could have made a, a, a sequel to Halloween 2. But we all know that John Carpenter is on board and Jamie Lee Curtis is on board for this new sequel. And I think when they approached, when Blue House got the rights to the Halloween franchise, part of the deal with getting John John Carpenter on board was that 
John Carpenter hates Halloween 2. Even though we all love Halloween 2, we think it's a great film, John Carpenter hates Halloween 2. He basically made Halloween 2 out of, out of necessity. He wanted to get paid, um, they had him under contract, and that was pretty much it. He stated in several interviews and several documentaries that basically he made this film out of necessity, it wasn't out of love. He had to film, he had to do, you know, he, he had to have a role in the film, but he really doesn't, he's not very fond of this movie. So, going back to, you know, the making of this new sequel, the 2008 Halloween, you know, I believe that, how, that John Carpenter's uh, agreement to make this film was, okay, I want to make a direct sequel to the original Halloween. I want, I want this to be what I would have envisioned the sequel to Halloween 2 would be if I really wanted to make it, okay? So he almost had his hands tied when the original Halloween 2 was made. So in this film, it's like, okay, what would, what would John Carpenter have done if he had his hands 100% in the production of the original Halloween 2? And so I feel like that's what we're going to get. Now... Are we going to get the John Carpenter that's just trying to, to make a, a quick buck? Or are we going to get the John Carpenter that made the original Halloween? That's my question, and that's kind of my fear moving forward with this franchise and with the sequel. Um, how much involvement is John Carpenter going to actually have in this film? Uh, we've seen it before in a lot of these uh, John Carpenter Presents films. Um, they were really poorly done. They just didn't feel like a John Carpenter film. So are we going to get that with the sequel? Are we going to get John Carpenter Presents and his name is attached to the project and it's, it's just attached and that's it? And it's just basically John Carpenter trying to get a quick buck? Um, I hope not. Because I really hope John Carpenter is going to put 100% effort into this movie. And I really think it could revive this franchise if done, if done correctly. Uh, we get Jamie Lee Curtis returning... And I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Over the years, she's really distanced herself from the franchise. It was a, a, a long period of time between, you know, Halloween 2 and Halloween H2O where, where Jamie Lee Curtis basically despised the Halloween franchise. And then she came back for Halloween 2 and she basically put her own terms on that film. If she was going to participate in this film, she wanted it done on her, under her terms. Which, Halloween H2O is kind of a mixed bag for me. I like it on certain levels, but it fails on others, okay? It's, it's got that real poppy, that pop, you know, end of, the, end of the 90s, early 2000s feel to it. We've got these really plastic and kind of fake actors. Um, I liked Josh Hartnett's portrayal in that film. I think it was believable, but some of the other actors were questionable. You got LL Cool J in the movie. That was kind of the, the thing at the end of the, the late 90s, early 2000s. How can we get these hip-hop stars in our films, okay? They wanted to pull in uh, different a different audience, and they wanted to pull in that hip-hop audience. So they brought in LL Cool J, and then we had Resurrection. They brought in Busta Rhymes. And although I think they're great musicians, I don't feel like they're they're good actors. Okay, I've seen LL Cool J in other films, and I think he's okay in other films. But as far as Halloween goes, I think it was kind of silly. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on those two films that Jer Jamie Lee Curtis were in, and certainly Halloween Resurrection was a bombshell. It's it's probably revered as one of the worst films in the franchise. So yeah. You can see kind of, they killed off Jamie Lee's character at the end of Resurrection. And so I think it was very difficult to get her involved with this film. So she's probably got her own conditions and things that she wants in this film, just like John Carpenter. The, to get the two of them together is a great feat. So I credit Bloomhouse Productions to get them on board. But how much say did they actually have in the film, Okay. That's my biggest question. That's my biggest fear moving forward. Um, I'm really excited for this film. From my understanding, and this could be a spoiler alert, so I'm kind of like warning everybody ahead of time. 
I'm just kind of going off of what I've heard and what I've read online that, you know, we're going to see uh, some children of Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, now, it hasn't really been said whether they're going to bring the uh, the brother-sister relationship from part two, whether that's going to be involved. I know in the past, uh, John Carpenter has basically said that he didn't really want to have a relationship between the two of them, that, you know, Michael Myers is basically just a force of nature. He's not supposed to be explained in any way. So to have that relationship connection between Jamie, Curta, Jamie Lee Curtis and Michael Myers, I don't really think it's going to be there. If they were going to do that, I think he would have went off of Halloween too. I don't think there's a reason really to bring in that relationship factor there. Now, it's logical to think that Jamie Lee Curtis in that time period um, that she's going to have that Laurie Stroh is going to have kids. Uh, it's logical to think that that she's not she's not going to be you know in her fifties or sixties or whatever, and not have any kids. She's just going to be a hermit. I mean that doesn't make any sense. So we're going to see Jamie Lee Curtis's kids in this film, and I think that's how they they could possibly set up a future for the Halloween franchise. If it doesn't end with this film, then we are going to see Jamie Lee Curtis's kids somehow play a role in future films, and this could be. How they how they bring in this next generation of, of kids that haven't haven't grown up on the Halloween franchise. This is going to be the film that that brings them in. They're going to bring in new characters. They're going to be the children of Jamie Lee Curtis. That's where I feel like this film is going to be going. Um, and I feel like after I've given it some thought, I think it's 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 the right thing to do. Okay. I initially was kind of up in the air. I didn't really like the idea that they were kind of basically dismissing all the films that came after 2. I really liked 2 a lot. It didn't bug me when H when H2O did that, so I don't feel like it's going to bug me too much with this movie. Um, I see it as, okay, we got really good movies from the original, you know, the, the first, you know, Halloween 2, you know, The Return of Michael Myers, The Revenge of Michael Myers, The Curse of Michael Myers, H2O, Resurrection, the zombie films, I thought they were all good. And I feel like they're their own story in itself. And I just love Halloween and I really just, I, I, I just, I'm open to anything Halloween related. So it doesn't bug me too much. Um, but I just fear, like I said, I just fear what they're going to do. And is this going to be the end? Are they, are they going to basically kill off Michael Myers and is this going to be it? Now, with... John Carpenter having his hands on it, I think we're going to come to a pretty solid conclusion to Michael Myers and Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, but I think that there's going to be some kind of clause in the contract with Bloomhouse Productions that they're going to kind of somehow leave the door open for future sequels. And they probably, in my opinion, will revolve somehow around... Jamie Lee Curtis's children. Now, is Michael Myers going to be in the mix? I don't know. We'll have to see in October of 2018 what they do with the story, where it takes, where it goes. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. I'm looking forward to hearing new news. I'm I'm super excited to see this trailer, and you can you can best and believe that when this trailer comes out, I'm going to be doing my reaction video of this trailer because Halloween is one of my favorite franchises, my favorite uh, slasher franchise, and it's one of my favorite horror fr franchises. So I'm, I'm super excited for that trailer to come out, and I will be doing a review on that. But anyways, guys, uh, those are my thoughts on the franchise as a whole. Um, I didn't go too in-depth with the other films in the franchise, because I really want to focus on this new movie. I do love all the movies. Don't get me wrong. I'm a little disappointed. Part of me is disappointed about them discrediting all the movies that came after the first one. But the same token, I'm super excited for this film. We're finally getting a John Carpenter sequel to the original. And so many fans have been wanting John Carp Carpenter to come back and tell his story. So I'm excited as well. I can't wait. But anyways, guys, those are my thoughts on the original films and my thoughts on this new poster that came out and the sequel that's going to be coming out October 18th, 2018. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, 
Um, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. All support is greatly appreciated. And as a reminder, I'm going to be doing a four Blu-ray 100 subscriber giveaway once I reach 100 subscribers. And what I'm going to be giving away are these four films. Okay. Now I, I, I hand selected these films because it's a good mixture of a lot of different uh, genres of movies that I like. And I think they're all really good films. So I picked them out. And that is the 4K edition of Prometheus. Awesome, awesome movie. And at some point, I'm going to be doing a review of the entire Alien franchise. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the Shallows. This is an awesome, awesome uh, movie. If you like Jaws, if you like those um, you know, creature films about sharks, this is an awesome film. Blake Lively does a really good job in this movie. It's really suspenseful. It's a great thriller. And it's just an all-around good movie for a date night with your, with your lady friend. Highly recommend it. Uh, another awesome film, it's not one of my favorite Stephen King films, but it's definitely a great film in its own right, and that is Misery. Now, this is the Scream Factory Collector's Edition. It's sealed. Awesome, awesome film. I'm going to be giving that away as well. And last but not least, The Lost Boys, one of my favorite, favorite vampire franchises. I love this film. I have great memories as a kid watching this. And for anybody that doesn't own this film, I want to give it away because I think it should be a belong in everybody's collection. All right, everyone. Those are the four films that I'm going to be giving away with my 100 subscriber giveaway. In order to be considered in this giveaway, you need to like this video or like the um, original video that I have uh, that I have on my channel that explains all the details of it. Um, you need to comment. Drop me a comment. Let me know what your favorite... Uh, what your favorite movie is, what your favorite beer is, and what maybe what you'd like me to review. So I do uh, beer reviews every Saturday. Um, let me know what maybe a movie that you want to uh, want me to review and talk about. And lastly, you need to be a subscriber to my channel. So once you've done all those, those three things, I'm going to enroll you into my giveaway. And then once I hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to pull all the names of the people I have that have done those three things, and I'm going to put them, put their names in a random name generator. And the first person it gives me, I'm going to reach out to that person, and I'm going to put all these in the mail, and I'm going to expedite to them. All right? So hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take it easy.